Farscape 2000, Home on the Remains. The story begins with an incident view purifying Bojong adrift in space. Bojong is a planetized sized space dwelling animal. Monstrous fang like structures lie in the mountain fender, slowly crept in Bloomoth. The light of near, some nearby star plays of its pitted and mouldering surface. Something that looks an awful lot like a finding is lodged in the mouth, as if as it was it, if it is choked to death on. Cut to the central chamber of Maya, whose starving crew look out the window, an hydrogenic slab of space faring roadkill, where Jeanne has apparently guided them to, evidently having dined there before. John is busy himself with cl- cooking utensils. He says wistfully, Fields of green grass, Jeanne. Trying to put a positive spin on this. Well, mould is a green? John, crystal blue streams. Jeanne, a ruptured bod- bodocks, actually. John, flatly, if I had anything at all in my stomach right now, I'll throw up. Aaron, she enters with a verbal shudder and hurries into the window, peer out at a beyond dong, whose surface from the distance does indeed resemble that of a planet. Ah, oh, well, never been seen anything like it. Maya could fit in its mouth. Jan with satisfaction, it means of a big bulldog, one of the largest creatures there is. John bustling about with his cooking preparations. For this last month you've been turning this fantastic place where you're going to get fed. And this is it, a big rotting bulldog? Right on, you've been sitting and watching the decay. That's the window summits. You mean that thing's edible? She had nervously. Well, young flesh is, well, kind of poisonous. But I get these pulsate things that are filled with acid mucus. John interrupting her. Yeah, yeah, well, we've got it. We got that one. We ain't edible. He put it loose with a big juicy squeeze sneeze. Aaron, what's the matter with you? John, I don't know, wiping his nose with his hand. I don't know. I hope it's not a cold, because I'm sure I ain't going to get any chicken soup on a bill, John. John is defending a choice of destinations. Look, I didn't know that chicken soup is a, a, okay, but there's plenty of other food in the mine, at the mining camp. John, what? People live in the middle? Give a couple of big white scrubs in, from a dish, plops them in a the frying pan. Shall you inside? Yeah, money for neolithic crystals. And how do you find out about this place? She and well, my brother near here. I stayed here for a while. We had a great time. Aaron, why did they leave then? Shan, the wind blew in different directions, tried to smiles. Aaron, you having no trouble into the fringe. Shan sent it quickly to answer, really? Rydell, also having no problem catching a drift. How much did you steal? John looks up from his pan, sizzling worms. He says there's something else. Like a looming disaster, perhaps. Shan, it was a long time ago. John, and you are going to are you going to be welcome the prodigal daughter back home for Thanksgiving meal? Well look, we're welcome at once we're there. If they got food, Aaron sniffs loudly at Shanna. Let's go, Aaron. That's a, what's that pulling smell, Roger Smith too. John breakfast. Aaron alarmed as he notices that John is frying up and quickly moves to the stove, Derek's. They, you can't eat Derek's? John, fried Derek's. You can eat anything as long as it's fried. He spears one and offers it to her. Aaron, she throws up in her, her hand and cringes, I pass. John, suit yourself, Jenny Rick Craig. I'm hungry. He takes a bite, bite of it, then gags and quickly spits it out as Rydell's makes a sound of repulsion. John picks up one of the fried Derek's and crams it to high over his Arabian mouth. And obviously not hungry. The point of Rydell was torn between whether he should spit the thing out or chug it down. I say we start burst out of here, try our luck somewhere else, Crichton. John, Aaron, we're out supplies. We're going to become the Donna Party of Uncharted Territories. We, if we don't get some food soon. Chen Ann, Nobby's going to starve. The colony is food, said Ann. She has entered quickly and is wearing a big, loose shawl. Her head and completely obscures her face. Her voice sounds weak. She Ann's right. We must go to the mining camp. She Ann, of course I'm right. Aaron, she walks over to Zan. Oh, Zan, you obviously don't hear. You need Zan. She and Anna has enemies that she's forgot to tell us about. Say Zan in a softly strained voice. I need food now. John, Zan. What's going on, Zan? Zan, she lifts her head and pushes the shawl back a bit. Aaron studdles away from her alarm. 
So Zan's face is covered reddish growths, resembling potato eyes, and pulling out roots. I must have food or die. It's cut soon after. Cut to a day ago, John arrived as they entered the transport bay, fast clip of preparation to meet the boat, John. Aaron stalked behind him, angry. Aaron demanded, why, Crichton, why? Why do I have to stay aboard Maya? John, because Diego and I are allergic to whatever's happening to Zan. You aren't. Diego? There's a violent sneeze, John says to him. You're feeling all right? Are you up to this? Diego, I'm not sure that what's worse. The hunger pains or the thrilling energies? Rigel, impatient. What the dinner are we waiting for? She Anne. He's entered back, enters back, backed out. A long, stinky outfit. Me. Why do I know? He yells, sir. John pausing into my scenery. Shemazam, that's nice. Shan, you think that'll catch two men's eye? Diego, who's her own? Shan, just an old friend. He'll look after me. We'll get food, don't worry. John, well, we better better or Zan dies. Come on, let's go. Aaron to John, jealous of Shan, and not, also not really the prospect of babies treating Zan. In the case of the end of an enemy. Oh, it's just, that's just great. I'll get to stay on board with blooming boo bush. And you get to play with your friend's favourite little tra- trick. Julie Norina, be back in a couple of arms, tops. It marched off as Diego sneezed again. Soon after, cut to the deep, being the di- dead double long, by its close up is scattered with grey colour of rotten meat. The interior of the battle along is dimly lit and steamy. Mining camp is comprised. The, the, the mountain mining camps of the universe over the shacks and steads scattered about amid old bits of machinery fires burn and there's a constant background sound of metal tools hitting bone on bone, bone a crew are disparked from the transport are walking through the camp to hope the food tastes better than this place smells there you go where did you what did you expect it's a corpse why do it's a filthy filthy kilt shy sty jen annoyed do you want food or not there you go what about your friend Jian, Timur, Timum. She goes, why didn't you tell us about him before? Jian makes her point as her hair is ruffled by breeze blowing from somewhere we probably don't want to know about. Rigel, is he edible? John, shut up, Rigel, to Jian. Did you, did, didn't you? You stole from this guy. How is that going to go down? Jian, how did, when I told, tell him there yeah, he's dead, he'll forget about the memory money. John, you're going to use your dead brother to play his, his, his sympathies? Jan, defensively, have a plan. John, turning away, as he says with sarcastic reassurance. There you go, it's okay. Jan has a plan. A moment, steam horn blasts. Warning for the camp. Jan, she cries out in alarm. Exactly level camp suddenly increases. A people shout, come running, attack. There you go, Crichton. A cavada, a budding alien, emerges from a building. Gates separating the camp. The rest of the Belladong is opened. A man is carried on a stretcher. His hoary mane covered with gore. Gloop. Glory group over but Cheyenne is still recognising him. Timon? Oh, frail. Right on. This is who's going to help us? Cheyenne. Jenna. She goes up to Timon. He's pretty much ghoulish. Ghoulish. Put the neck down and calls it softly to him. Timon, Timon. It's me, Cheyenne. Timon. Weak, bloody bubbles. His throat is a bit of Cheyenne. Don't let me suffer like this. Go get, go get Baron's soul. But instead of getting anyone, he quietly sees a toll and plunges it into his chest, killing him in a staggering way with a scream of grief. There you go, he tries to restrain her. What the hell's about what are you doing? Shan he strikes him, pulls him away and screams. Once that stuff touches you, you're dead anyway. John Shan, what's happening here? To the angel, he's smacked. The angel slaps her phone face on her face and yells. He has the idea of impact. Smacked. Into a compulsion, Cordovia must have been with him, after been after him. VG looks more like a refugee from Kelp Basie's orchestra than a miner. He went a visor like a casino dealer, a fancy coloured, high coloured suit, but with an ascot. He's an earring his left ear, a vaguely Jamaican accent. John V. Kiefer? Ke- what exactly is Kiefer? VG, vicious beast that feeds off the bit of John. Chews up anything and gets in its way. Burly John, the burly creek alien approaches and says loudly, You did what need you did what needed to be done, she and as usual, these weaklings didn't have the guts to put my brother out of his misery. Go home, all of you. I'm closing minds to attract that Kiveva and kill it. By doing his basic human appearance, he's tall and bald with 
fuchsia down the middle of his skull. His complex is very shiny. He's clad in bulky, enhancing black leathery clothing, decorated by stole silver hardware. He carries an accent somewhere between an old American cowboy, movie western drawl, a lurch from the Adam family. Regel, VJ. But her mind's closed. How are they going to, those poor folk got to earn an endemic for professions, but a song. How are they going to, are you going to, going to, are you going to, anything if you're dead? Now get out of here, VJ. I've gone. He and the rest of the crowd disperse. But song looks down at Shiana. Never thought I'd see you again. You out. You got some nerve, Shiana. I've done pause as she moves her lips and tries to think of a new plan. Of course, she never has what. Only has her ever one plan. Sticks with it, as she says coldly. Timon used to stay. You like slight my nerve. But song he moves very close to her. They, that there wasn't why I like to. Too bad you left so suddenly. Why are you back? She and our ship is left out of food. We're dying of starvation. Thought you could help us. John licks his lips just inches from hers. The old Dogo growls. A tall alien sh- shifts. You gaze at Luxian. But it's on. You want food? Hand over your weapons. Be gone. But they go flatly. No. But it's just so ugly. And stay angry. Stay angry. Stay hungry, John. Quickly. Stay being forward. The hand he's gone over. Here's your, here we are, Marshal. Dago reluctantly follows suit. Dago, Bozong, Gonsiena, obviously not so taken by pretty face as some. I feed your friends, but not you, Shanna. You use my charity. And with that, he turns and walks away. Shanna looks after him. Shot uh, before saying the, the, to the other Shan. She avoids. I cut up with him. Go get food for Zian. John and Rigel slightly followed by Jong. Song. Dago stands there watching her. But then a woman approaches Shan from her behind, gives her a slap on the back. Shan jumps and whirls to face her. Alente. Alente is a frumsy older woman, different race of Timon and Bojo. She humanoid, a long, uncut silver hair, silver hand, hard hat that perched on the back of her head. Think Asian party girl, cross the grizzly in minor. Her lace is wrapping and straining all the way. Live and kicking, she gives Shana a big hug. Come on, girl, I'll give you a feed. Dago watches them go. Soon after, cut to Lente's humble abode. It's dark and smoky, lit by an open smoking fire. Shiana, so that's Dissing. So what's Dissing, little you, been up to, Lente? Ah, could have uh, just got after you. Got her just after you left. Both lost both her arms and both her, her half her face. She and Mummery, true god. And her two girls. She and she Shira gave it up. She bugged out. She's got some kids or something now. She and true. What about Jake? And her got it big and left. Just like I'm about to. She's moving around in a hobble. So she talk. Sits down on what looks like a pot of broth. She and hey girl, you've been. You've been here too long. Been waiting your whole life for that big score. No good. Janitor, no more, girl. I'm leaving because I did hit it big. Shan looks amazed and comes to Nick, sits next to her. And is turning a bright green crystal. The size of walnut over in her fingers. As Shan grates, we had better shut it before something you don't like, don't like flies in. She drops the crystal back in liquid of the pot. Shan breathing heavily. Hey, you fa- really found something? You enter a vein of necrolite near the second liver, just past the ribs. Set me up for ten lifetimes, she ended up chuckling. Oh, I'm happy for you, Chanta. Be happy for yourself, girl. I want you to have a share. Chanta, I cannot le- believe a good fortune. You do? Well then, I'll get the food for Zan, for us all. You enter just one problem, be strong. A fella, he closed the mines. Bastard's probably down there right now, jumping my claim. Chanta, enter? Do you think Bichon? Think Bichon would kill, kill Timon? Lanter to Smithith. Come on, girl. They are brothers. Come on, one girl. They are brothers. Cut to Moya. Aaron's talking to Zan, in, who's lying down with her hands, raised helplessly to one either side of her head. The shoots erupting from her face, her head, already an inch long. Aaron, why, well, surely you could do something. It's not a cure. If it's not a cure, stabilise it. Zidane, her eyes are in focus. A golden yellowish is green. Her speech is halting. 
I can mix the saliva, which might slow down the growth of buds. And briskly, she lo- she's looking alongside the sedan, as if to a pulse by condition. Look directly at her. Great. You stay there and tell me how to mix it. Sedan mumbles. Weakly, Zidane, can you tell me? Zidane, Bichoro, and Dujol. Aaron, right. Which one of the ones are they? Zidane, the two marks of each virals. Aaron taps some of the contents of virals into another container of mixes, which of sizzles and steams. But to that Zidane response, Zidane, can you hear me? Zidane sells intentionally. Aaron mutters, figuring great. Pollock Com, Officer Sam. Aaron, yes, what is it, Pollock? Pilot, the micro pollen sedan producing are beginning to affect Maya. She's experiencing a slight numbling sensation along her on a hole. And all right, put the aphasmeric scrubbers to maximum susceptibility. Hey, uh, Pilot, already done. And well, I don't know what else to suggest then. Cut her back to dead bulge dung, Diego, John, and Rigel sitting at a tall table eating gr- chunks of green stuff. Both tongues hobble, which is a bit more posh than an antes. The air is clear, and there's actually furniture and a lamp used on the bowl, so the bird room grease. The host is eating at a separate table, while you're now with his mouthful. This is your grand stretch of generosity, fungus mode, light chins. Eeks, he eyes with John Song. What are you eating but some meat? I don't, why didn't I get any meat? Why, Sean, if you want meat, you've got to pay for it. He rises and approaches his Rigel. So... What have I given you? Is it for your liking? Rigel well, grasps an alarm and quickly hunches a plate of fungus. Oh, no, 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 no. John, you can ignore that little green eating machine. We appreciate what you've done for us. But Sean soul smiles, turns back, toward, back towards his seat. Diego, only slightly more polite than Rigel. We need more food. We need enough to last until we get to this system. But so you want more? You have to earn it. Everyone else, once they open the mines, John. What do you say? We trade. We've got medical supplies, weapons, the song. There is no common, this is not a common plant. You want meat? No, we crystals, buy food, work, it's crystals. They go annoyed, then we work. Dried your horrified to Dago. Dominoes do not work, especially not in some rotting courts filled with creatures. Just then the sound of men. Talking slightly, Driss and Rigel spots VJ outside sitting in front of some sort of games up. What are those men doing? By Sean Demo. Do you play? Rigel, I, well, I'm, I'm about to. John, we're, out, we're here for Zidane and Maverick, not games. Rigel, I'm here for food. This is how I get it. But so, I introduce you. Rigel, most kind, he chuckles slightly. And leaves with be Sean. Diego slightly was referring to the meat. Maybe you should have fried this. John, well, he is a lobster, but it'll keep the land alive. Keep an eye on the children till I get back. Picks up the pail of the song slop and leaves. Soon after, cut back to Moya. Aaron and John are walking. John, with his bucket, Aaron already has some of the contents, greedily sucking it off her fingers. Aaron definitely takes the edge off. John, noting Moya's indoor air pollution. Man, could it get any worse in here? I can barely breathe. And enters the dining room, and John goes cheerily. Hey, Blue, d- delivery. Ain't exactly done the most, but it's got here in the less than 20, 30 minutes, saying John. She looks worse than the food, but it's now resemble all paragus. Shoots, is erupting rambly from her face. John sitting down his pail and getting a piece of what looks like a pale green cornmeal, much out for which he puts his own lips. Okay, here you go. So now he's a greenish chunk, and her head falls back wearily. Come on. Dan can't gone too far. Need meat. John takes back, taking back. No, no, you don't want. You don't want a meal. Meat, meat, bad for you. It's not cholesterol. It's got cholesterol hormones. So Dan slowly rouses himself as he bubbles with snake-like speed. Grabs his wrist, an iron grip, knocking the green curd of his hand and causing him grunt with pain. Dan, animal protein stop the budding cycle. Buds evolved for protection. Vermin immobilize us. Perimeter attacks, bud poison animal. When animal dies, we eat animal to recover. John, hey, we'll get you some meat, said Anne, her blood, eyes are blood red. Now, cut back to Bojong, Rigel Vij- Chuj, playing demo. Rigel gasping as VJ speaks him. Apparently, not for the first time, you cheated. Vijay, yeah, chuckling. It's part of the game. 
You are such a lousy cheater. Why do you offended by the suggestion? I have no no malignant cheater. I just not my best right now. This outrageous hunger is affecting me. PJ, let some let some let's see some of those genetic crystals you claim to have. Why do we set them all up when they were done? Why, Joe, PJ, you know what I think. I don't think you have any crystals they ever did. Why do don't be ridiculous, PJ? You a little about you a little, little about having anything of any value you to bet with. Vigil, buffing his way, I demand another game, I'll tear your friggin' eyes out. Fiji really is engrossing his lifting, tilting, turning his roars and accents, all unhinged. Takes a chainsaw massacre now, you green ass stinking, warty little bastard. I wanna kill you. Vigil, his eyebrows droop and he swallows doubly. They don't get you, don't get your crystals. They won't get your crystals, Fiji. Let me, then get me those crystals in one way or another. Cut back to the long stack. Is he is deep on the flowers as he enters. Be song, yeah. You look good on that couch, always did. Shan rising and going to him, seeing as how he walked right past her without stopping. Monsieur Besong, you chose to move over me. Shane, Shanna. Well, maybe he made the wrong choice. Tumbo, gone now. Anyway, she questions the rubs against him. He makes no more move to return to the mountains. But so long, you haven't seemed too broken up about it. China saying, Well, you to you. Be some. Well, we all grieve in our own way. Tom was my brother, partner, I miss him. He allows Trina to service him. He sits there motionless. Shannon, yeah, me too. You go, we've got to move on. Mine is me too. Jacob can you see enough if he enters. Be some. Shannon quickly steps away from him. Jacob buzzes in. Be some, go away. Song, Vega, one of our shipmates is dying. It's a mess of meat. Be song, you have nothing to trade for it. Diego, dangerously. We give you whatever you want. I want that meat now. Shan, it must be something you want. Be song, facing, wanting to face Shana. Is that what it, what this is about? Free, free handouts? He turns back to Dago. I told you, you want meat. You have to pay for it. He then turns to leave. He pauses. Look at Shana again. Maybe you do have something to trade. Dago, no. Diego, knowing Diego. Be song with knowing Diego. Does, it, does he make all your decisions for you? That's not quick with Shane, I know. Shane, no, I make my own decision. She sits down on his couch. Diego, crutch. Diego, run away, Luxian. But Diego texts him instead. Quickly hands him on the floor. Diego screaming in fury. Now give me what I need. Diego, Diego's song. Call him from the floor. You've got monologues, Luxian. But I hear the meat in the mine, and no one knows the mine like I do. Kill me, you'll never find it. A ship that dies anyway. Trina Diego. He wants to f- a night with me. I'll give it to him. First song. One night? Oh, I pay for keeps. A life for life. I'll give you meat. you mine. Until I'm done with you. He smiles and waves frickly at her. So another but cut to Shayna Diego. I said the mining camp. Shayna's angry. What, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Attacking a big song like that. What did you think? He would just head over to meet Diego. It seemed... Like a better plan than waiting for you to thrill him into submission. Shane in well, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. I thought it was supposed to be about saving Shazan. They got annoyed. There are other ways to get crystals that we need. I'm not letting you stay with him. Shane, don't tell me what to do. They go, well, somebody has to. Shane walks, turns to walk away. Shane, Shane, she stops and takes a step to, back towards him. They go, and a brother. He's gone. I don't need another. They go, don't want to be your brother. Jan, then what? He says nothing for a long moment. He turns away. We stop. Again, as he says, Dago, I want to help you. Jan, do you want to help? My friend Lente, she's found this really big vein of crystals. She's willing to share the wealth. Dago, is enough to save the Zan? Jan, and the more enough to set the clothes of mine because of Kivdeva. Kivdeva. Dago, what if it went down there with her? Crap back to Moya. Aaron has taken it upon herself to try something else as Suzanne. Basically, it's a sun lamp, but she's working on rigging up. Put it on com. Collaboration is complete. Suzanne, tell you what it tells you to use. Aaron, but Zan's out of it, Pilot. I'm doing this on my own. Pilot, then how? Do you know it help? Aaron, I didn't. She's, but she's a plant and she loves light. So much as Aaron, for Aaron's science career, okay. And without further ado, she switches the lamp light around. Zan hears the parrot's 
bag of spears burst open like milk weed pods throw out a variable snowstorm of white sea puffs and hits the switch off off switch then they're sitting up and throwing off fluff like a lamb fashion cat buzz can be heard making the little popping sounds they explode while you're reading upon it but it's there now it seems to be extruding spores reaction intense light you can always count upon it for brilliant observation and can you do anything about it but I minimize my elimination as precaution, but the spawn levels are still increasing. You'll, you'll only make things wor- made things worse, Aaron. I had to do something. Don't give me any sh- didn't give me sh- sh- sure. Blame upon it. And then brainfully to Aaron. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Aaron, what? I was trying to help Zidane. Zidane lies. You tried to kill me. Zidane, Aaron, don't be stupid. Then, British British peacekeeper. Now Bob pops out, Aaron suppresses a sneeze as he tries to wave the very drifting bits of fluff away. Can't wait to see me, don't you die? You'll join this, Aaron, but not in the least. He sneezes explosively. Cut back to Bill John John, pacing around the mining camp, trying to work some nervous energy. A ball is tossing from one hand to the other. John, talking to himself, it should be easy, never easy. He stops and says with disgust, Bo John. But in a moment, he overhears Sienna, be a song. Dog in the doorway of his shack. Can I stay half a circle? Half a circle, not more and more. No more, Bijong. I've given you my terms. Leave them. Take them and leave them. That was the deal, Chian. Chian can't be negotiate. No song, no. Chian, they part in China. Chian walks quickly away, frustrated, muddling, frail. John steps up into a path. John, where's Jago? Do you get some meat? John and preoccupied. Yeah, he's working on it. In the mines, John. What? In the minute? Is he nuts? You remember the creature, don't you? Yeah, by the song stops overhearing him. Sound troubles the dead bird, John. How long has he been, been gone? She I don't know. Like three arms or not so. He's Valente. John, it should be easy. Never easy. Gonna have to get him. Back, come back to Moya. Aaron's in pilot's den. Coughing, hacking. Pilot. Said so Anne's spores are spreading faster. And the scrubbers can move it. Penetrating Moyle's neutral conduits and draining his senses. And how badly? Pilot already enough to impede navigation. Aaron, can you compensate? Pilot Aaron was having difficulty. My own contrary to Moyle is still much less than optimal. It's always something. Aaron, now how much damage can these the spores do? Pilot, if the levels continue to decrease, Moyle be permanently blinded. Aaron, if it, it's all right. I won't let you that happen, Pilot. Well, if Zan were to leave my perm as I leave, she and I would leave the transport, transport pod, transport pod, and you could open the rest of Moya's the space and flush the pollen out, Pilot hesitant. It would help Moya, but what about you? The spores have begun to attack you as well, and quickly dismissing his current, turning to his snuffles. Now I'll be fine. We just need to buy some time. So I'm quite going to return to meet your prime. You prime my transport pod, all right? Aaron pilot very well, Aaron. She quickly exits the den, proceeds to the murky atmosphere. The Moya of Zan's quarters, which looked as if shaken snow globe, with drifts of fluffy fluff collecting everywhere. The room is some no, well, otherwise empty. Zan's gone, Pilot. Cut back to the middle of John. Dong. Bad John. Pilot has entered the mine with a flashlight. The mine looks like an inside of Thanksgiving turkey. It's been left to fall on a count of a week with giblets in. John Diego, at the moment he hears the sound of pack relapse. Tug Monkey then moves towards the sound and comes upon Rigel, hacking away the bright green bright crystal embedded in the bold strong stony instru- infrastructure. Rigel, what the hell are you doing down here? Rigel, Rigel get lost, Crichton. This one's mine. Don, you seen Diego? Diego, you forget Diego. A filthy character. Very J threw me down here just because they lost that demo. He cheated, John. What? You didn't? Rigel annoyed. Of course I cheated. John, you cheated and you lost? Rigel tapping towards Stoko. We're annoying to Jago and Jaina. We're lying to the crystals, so let's go. Pulls back, makes a pull. Um, Rigel along with him. Rigel pulling way back. Way back to his crystal. Right, and I've got a crystal right here. Our luck is changing.
John, he grabs one of Rigel's eyebrows, and which crunches and causes the Hoverian to yelp with pain as John speaks directly into it. That's your ear, right? Okay, he says, Anne, it's almost out of time. So get your crystal, let's go. Rigel yelps again and drops his pickaxe. John walks away, but he doesn't get far before a high pitched sound, like a whistle is heard. He stops and put, backs up a bit, then all growl is heard somewhere in the dark tunnels around him. He backs away from it. The flicks of his fetchlight. So he cracks it down and says in a loud whisper, Rigel. Another vicious growl is heard close up. Rigel. He looks around at him and the sound of something moving nearby. Even he, nearby can be heard along with more. No rumbles. Rigel. Something comes close behind him and snarls. John looks over his shoulder to see the outline of a man shaped thing, tunnel, dark tunnel behind him. The thing drops all fours and begins snuff shuffling. Pass towards him. John takes up the opposite direction, yelling, Arky! So he, so he gets to Rigel just in time to find him staring and float, standing float in his hover chair, up the vertical shaft. Rigel's sorry, Quentin. John moves a beast at his heels and dies for Rigel. And we try to grab the hover chair. No, you don't. You're not ditching me. Rigel is the hover chair. Strange under the added weight to John. Get it off. Let me go. John, no way. Rigel, there's no reason for both of us to die. I'm a dominant. You're just you. Kevada blows it now, blows at them, howling and snapping at them. John, shut your yap and give it more, more gas. Rigel, there's no more gas. Let's go. I can't die. John, screw you. Rigel, we're going down. John, Rigel, kicking frankly the most of blow. Rigel, let go. I won't die for the last time. Let me go. Let go now. I'll bite your fingers off. John, oh yeah, screw you. Rigel bites and John howls of pain. Ah, Rigel. But a moment the shrill whistle is heard again. Kebaba abruptly stops at its attack. John and Rigel, however, continue to squat each other. But the hound hisses at him. He realises the beast has drawn. Rigel, Rigel, hold it. He bites Rigel's ear to get attention. They go, each other, in sudden silence. They let go of each other in sudden silence. Rigel panning. Lucky for you, John. Head butts him and Rigel howls. Ow, what was that for? John panting. I ate, for you, ate, you, I ate your lunch. Rigel spits. The derelicts tasted better. John spitting. You tasted worse. Spits again. Ah, uh, it's still huddled on top of just several feet up, trying to catch their breath. Okay, here's a plan. You're going to go back to the transport pod and stay there. Rigel, what about me, Jay? John, what about Kivava? Rigel, oh, good plan. John, now put your ass down. And they sink. Slowly the floor. Cut back to Moya Wednesday. Then continues to deteriorate. She's now installing hailing spores as well as putting them off, putting, putting them off by her buds. Aaron is searching ship for her. Aaron says, "Then, then, why didn't you answer me, Pilot? Why didn't you? You can't you locate her, Pilot? Come, the spores are cutting to my senses too much. I can't even track them where they are." And I'm on her, and there's no sign of her. I'm on Aaron on tier seven, no sign of her. Pilot cut to him in his den, off his son. Words were the Can't find Zan soon. You might have to flush the atmosphere away. Anyway, Aaron understood. Cut back to Bojong, down in the mines with Aaron Slante and Dago working her claim. Slante, some water. Dago, thanks, Slante. Couldn't you both have done this without this? Right? Could have done this, weren't you? They are both of our purposes were served. We serve Zan, you get a you get out of here. I don't I don't think gonna I'm not gonna miss the stench, but I will miss the spoiler of it. They go through and then to always living. Constantly on your guard, alive and fighting. They go you sound like she ain't that. And then to grunting on her she works. Oh that girl, she's a wild one, but she's got a heart of gold, there you go. Moldy, moody, she had lies she's certainly flexible. That's for sure, the ante. You do whatever it takes to bring it meat for your for end. There you go. That's what worries me. Alente. Yeah, it always got got come out on top. The two of us. We had our fun even when her and Tim Tim um, were together. All oh, that fella, all oh, that fella is good for her. Her brother. There you go. And yet she replays this kind of stealing from him. That's why it's very difficult to trust her. And then opposing the in the work. There you go. You and you and Shana together. There you go. No. Ante? No, or not yet. Jago quietly, that's up to her. 
cut back to Moya, Aaron loping through the corridors, a little late separation attempt to locate the wayward Zan. The scene shifts between Aaron and Pollock in the den. Pull and Com. Aaron, any further consideration? Moya will lose all ability to navigate. Aaron, then we can't, we just can't wait any longer. Pollock, but unless Zan secures herself to the teleport pod, the operation will kill her. Aaron, you stand if so, a simp. I said, and this is a full elf, very full. Is there no other way to say Moya? Pilot sigh, softly say no. And then still off the command and do it. Pilot regret to compression in five microwaves. He touches a panel on his work console. Moya's interior is open into space. Everything locked down, down is sucked out, including the old, old D R D D. Cut to Aaron and command. Aaron softly says, Aaron, forgive us. Pilot quietly offers the sun. Ball levels have dropped. Aaron, thank you, Pilot. But beginning we restoration now. I'll take an arm. Cut back to Vidom, Diego and Lente. Now in attack by Guevara. In her mind, De- Lente. Going to flee as the Cavalier gets loose of its horrible moaning roars. Diego. And when his shoes in the black mine tunnel, Diego's knocked down by Guevara. His sound goes for Lente. In a few short seconds, he's down, screaming, and sounds of crunching bone. Tearing flesh are heard in the inky dark. Greens to drag her body wing. The moment the whistle is heard again, it drops her and moves off the rumbling, rumbling ground. Cut to John, plodding wearily out. A mine back into camp. Shenny spots him. They join up. Shenny, Crichton, John, Diego, make it back. Shenny, well, why didn't you find it? Why well, didn't you find it? John, as he takes a drink. Shenny offers him. No, I found right on one very big, ugly critter. Shenny worried. They should be back by now with the crystals. John, I've been a, been a hell of a day. Don't get some meat before at the end of it. I'm going to cut my own down and off. I'll feed it as I am. At that moment, the steam horn blares. He's warning for the camp again. Funeral you know, creatures are alarm. I lent him. John sets down his glass and he and she and he run to where Billy Song is now entering the camp from the mines. John, what happened to his home? Mine was a close, but some of you decided to ignore it. Cheyenne, where did they go? Lente, it's very strong. I found your friends, but you got there. They got there too late. John, he pulls the song around to face him. What the hell do you mean too late? We shot a herd at Cavada. I drove it off. That moment, Diego staggers in the mine, off of the mine, coughing and spilling, choking, choking, and choking. Dave, John, John, Cheyenne, and John rushes to him. John, Diego, he is trying to support him. His pants and tries to speak. What? Well, easy. Trying to stress. Dear, yeah, stress. Try to get in. But I couldn't. I couldn't protect her. She then, as she walks over to Lente, my own corpse with her bimby came back from the stretcher. She calls off for her softly. Lente, Lente. Lente is silent forever. Cut to later. Diego and John are sitting and talking to the camp. In the camp. John, Diego, what happened? Diego, the creature, her attacked. Tried to stop it, but John, how bad you hurt. Diego, never broke with blood running clear. Survived, eh? Bajor Shong approached them. Bajor Shong, your friend is lucky to be alive, Cheney. He strides over to another direction to crunch Bajor Shong. You should. Yeah, how could this happen? First Timor, Timon and Lente. John, you know what? Bajoro, someone is supposed to be such a great crit under. John, ain't good been doing that good of a job, Bajor Shong. I close the mines for a reason. I stay out and let me do what I have to do. He leaves, John, all right. Pip, what's the next move now? She now we killed the lente. He's gonna take still gonna steal crystals. I'm not gonna let her let him. John, you stay here with Diego. Bojo, Bojo is a mine, and here he picks up a flashlight. He sets off with Bisso, 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 so. Cut back to Maya. Aaron waits for it, brief pressure raises the command. A legit reaction to Dan spars having lit up though. Aaron with sneeze and cough. How much longer, Pilot? Pilot gloomily. gloomily. Pre restoration complete in 1900 mi- microwatts. Aaron moved a moment. At the moment, they were at the end, literally washed down from the ceiling. Command as lightly as one of the spores. There behind Aaron, without warning, attacks her. Aaron's thrown aside, but it's unhurt. Turns face to sprouting the ground. Zan, you don't stand. Zan, as she slides dangerously towards Aaron. Try to kill me, suffocate me, poison, starve me, burn me with light. Aaron, I knew you'd been trying to help you. Sand, she stands there, shooting off the cage of gall. Bit of fluff. No, I've always hated me. Come to, come to VVA, prison me. She raises her hands, across them, her wrists, 
of her chest. Anne puts her hands out with a calming gesture, just for a reason. But as an Anne has extended deep, deeper into paranoia, said Anne, they are peacekeepers. I'm no longer a peacekeeper. Is Anne always, is Anne always a peacekeeper? Barrett Savage, that she delivers a vicious blow across Aaron's face and Aaron's throne. Floor as Anne could do softly. Afraid to come near me? Afraid to come to nation. Anne with her face against her cheek. Over as Anne built her. That's not true, as Anne plotted with Pilate against me, plotting my death. Aaron, nobody wanted you dead. We did whatever we could to help you. We ran out of options. Your spores will harm you. Moya, said Anne quickly, would ne- ne- never harm Moya. Aaron said Anne, she struggled to her feet. Look at me, I can barely talk. I can barely breathe properly. Your spores are doing that. It's far worse for Moya. Said Anne, Moya, no lies, don't to confuse me. John, Aaron, no. I'm trying to get through to you for the sake, sake of good, your goodness. God is think. Then, ferrying a brow and looking away. Think, I can't think, Hazy. I know she snaps her fingers at Zan's face, takes her back, cut through the haze, Zan. Think about your divan, turns over Paru. We trained your mind to control your thoughts. Do it now, Zan, I can't. She looks viciously at Zan. Help me, Aaron, all right. I will. He sets up close to Zan, headbutts her. Zan goes down like a sack of thistle seed. Taking out a little cut of spores, she hits the floor. Lacking Kleenex, Aaron sniffs her, stuffs her nose hugely before saying, Pilot, Pilot, with great careful studied neutrality, yes. Aaron, get the transport pod ready, primed. Get the transport pod primed. Meanwhile, back in the bird, John Nenetic minds. Bird song walks through the dark channels. John follows at some distance. Bird song sniffs the air a couple of times. It's clear, he knows he's being followed. He goes to his meat kish. Door behind the iron gate and touches. Takes the slab out. He walks away. John flicks off his, flicks off his flashlight. Approaches the sheesh himself. He manages to get a chunk of meat out too. But the general show en- he enters, draws attention to himself. Making a purring sound. John turns to face him. John, nice stack you got here. This song. And you can and you can still and you can still can to steal some of it. No fella, you have to earn it. John, just like Atlanta, he was going well before the critter got her, and the cavern roars in the distance. Speaking of the devil, what do you say would take this conversation somewhere else? Based on no, with that he lifts his whistle to his lips and blows a short note heard before the Kudeva sightings. John, well, I never heard that before. Oh no, I, well, I've heard that somewhere before. Heavily shuffling footsteps are heard. Kudeva enters by his Bichon. Bichon to give her, not yet. He stops and slinks around him like a tack dog waiting its cue. A truly nightmare beast. It looks like a cross between a huge ape and a bear with long grey hair. No, there's no real face, yet a gruesome set of jaws where his head ought to be. John, I've been seeing this guy somewhere before. Friend of yours? Fish on credulously. Primitive animal, but intelligent intellect is on its way. In intellect, intelligent in its own way. Over the years we've developed a mutually, mutually beneficial relationship. John, well, I'm not in the interested in your personal life. I should warn you, Cadaver swings his face towards him. I um, do not taste too good. There's some we don't meet you. The furs I give him, what I give him, that's how I trained to, to have him to have his way. At that moment, she and his herd calling a distance, training a triton, Crichton, this on, so you let uh, you two get to know each other. Let you two get to know each other. It's him, John, with Kadeva. You haven't seen him, but to walk right into it all. John is Kadeva, snarls and balances. He's filler. Just a big old dog, right? You look what I got. I look at that. He rips out a hank of meat and lifts it from beyond Screech, eh? shakes it amongst the hovering. Oh, yeah, this is good, huh? We want this? Yeah, yeah, he throws it over. Could have a shot and the beast turns to watch it. There you go, have a bite. Could have a seems to sight of over to go for the meat or for John. So John is backing away, continues to put out the meat and not encourage the creature and animal into it. No, 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 it's that way, that way, that way. That way he starts to amble off towards the meat. Good boy, good boy. But then it swings back again. It's got John the floor. No more, Captain Kirk. Chit chat.
John comes to the floor to do battle to keep Eva. A month is fast, but John has an advantage in agility. He manages to dodge it and dive in the meat cage, slamming the great shut after him. He catches the Gravier's floor in the grate and fails merely against the door. John panting cuts her free and opens the door enough for Cadaver to get away. He does, then turns and charges again at John. As the Cadaver bears down on him, he shines a beam in his flashlight, and his face is thrown off just enough for John to slam the grate down. He panting and killing it mere inches for his face. Miriam cut to Bishon, walking from the mine, suddenly hears Shana calling him. Shana sweetly, Bishon, turn around. He drops with his gun drawn. Shana, all he has heard is turning to him. Drop it, drop it. He complies, kick it away. He does, he demands, where's Creighton? Bishon, I've no idea. Shana, don't throw me. Bishon, frankly, believe me. Shana, oh, I won't believe you. Well, that's a joke, get him. Bishon, he puts his hands up and says, patiently, Shana, you're a thief and a salt. You're not a killer. Shana you know, evolving as an individual. Besides, I know you. You won't shoot me, cold blood. You couldn't do it. She you know, you're right. Lowering a gun a bit, I can't. But then when it was about a first shriek, she whips the gun back up and fires pulsate above with Shong. He caught a deadly spoon with acid mucus. Shong, he falls to the ground, howling angry. Bits of blood, his body dropping off to come one more one with a rotting but Shong. You bitch, what did you do? She turns and begins to walk away. Don't leave me to suffer, she doesn't even look back. Later, cut to Maya, the sedan, and cut the rest of the crew for stuffing themselves with meat. Eventually, they opt to forgo the delights for Bojong's crash and rotted, stinking dead of Bojong in favour of his fresh affair. And it have itself as hands, making that little sound of pleasure. Said, so hmm, and what? Said, painfully. More. Said, um, that was your full place. Said, so Gives her the other twist waving. Starting away for look as she dutifully folks out another slap of roast beast. There you go. Another helping. There you go. As she and her passes, makes eye contact with him before leaving. Ah, oh, no. He does. Goes with her. So then, ah, oh, it's, mm, it's wonderful. John, ah, Caroline style. Could you say? Best of luck you. This side of Bernadon. So then, thank you, John, for everything. John, it's my pleasure. Are you digging it in now? He exits, Darren, carving away her kitchen snack. Shank, she is then, void eye contact. Pipe was lead, but that you are recovering. So then, ruefully, as much as I suffered, your experience was also painful. I made things more difficult for you. Aaron, you wasn't yourself as I am. So I know I was a very less savage. I accuse you of being, I accuse you of being. I was a very present, I was very present, I was a very present revolting back to such a primitive, vicious state. Looking up, Aaron, I'm oh, sorry for what I said. Aaron, put in another slice of meat on the very Zan's plate. Here, don't, eat, don't talk. Cut the command with Zan, stands alone, watching the bedroom carcass. Maya pulls away. Dago enters, stands nearer. Dago, you must be happy to be out here. There. Zan, you can't, you don't, can't understand, Dago. Dago, you understand what? Loss? I understand that. Jenna is not a big thing. She walks away from him, sits down. Diego, Shana, you don't have to put that act on for me. Shana, Diego, I do what I do to survive. Diego, can't you just let go? Jenna, I can only let go when I feel safe. Shana, Diego, you are safe. Shana, am I? Diego approaches and bends down to kiss her softly. For a moment, they look at each other. He turns and leaves. Shana murmurs to herself, Whoa.